Harry Jones, in what year did Columbus discover America? Well, you see, uh, uh, that is... Uh, see, well... Yes, yes, Harry, I know that you don't know, and I'm sorry. But you'll have to remain after class and write the answer to that question 50 times. The rest of the class may go now. Come in. How do you do, Drury? You have a seat. We are waiting for Miss Brown to arrive. Then we'll proceed with the faculty meeting. Come in. Good afternoon, Miss Brown. How do you do, Drury Hardly? Professor, how's your rheumatism? Not so good, Miss Brown. Will you please be seated? I have very grave news. Of course, you are aware of the fact that this Institute of Learning has been swept entirely these past years by our endowment fund provided by its founder, the late Benjamin Ware. Our enrollment has fallen off to the point where we can count on very little revenue from the student fees. Today, I'm in receipt of a letter from Mr. Benjamin Ware III grandson of our beloved founder. He informed me that due to complications regarding the Ware estate, the Ware College Fund has been tied up, cutting off our revenue. This means that we'll have to close the school entirely. Oh, why no, not? We're not closed. Close. Yes. I regret to say we must close the school. If Benjamin Ware the first were alive today, he would not allow this terrible thing to happen. Unfortunately, we are dealing with young Mr. Benjamin Ware III, who, while he's an alumnus of this college, he does not take the interest of the school at heart, especially since our physical instructors, Miss Brown, sees fit to reject his offer of marriage. I'm sorry, Dean. I just don't love Mr. Benjamin Ware III. If my refusing him has anything to do with his attitude toward the school life... Now, now, Miss Brown. Don't think for a moment that I blame you in this action. I admire you for refusing young Ware's attention and view of the fact you do not love him. Many a girl would jump at the idea of marrying so wealthy a man even that she did not love him. Allow me to commend you for your truthfulness. It does seem terrible, Dean, that after devoting your entire life to the establishment of this college to be forced to close it. But think of the many fine young men and women who have graduated from where and become famous and successful in the business world. Now here, just take a look at a few of these. Now, there's Thomas D. Dury. Today he is one of the ablest lawyers in the country. And over here is A.J. Albert. And he's been in Congress for three years. Dean Hargreaves, I have an idea. Why not send an appeal to all the famous old grads of Ware College? I'm sure they'd rally to the aid of their old alma mater. Oh, let's invite them here to a reception. Uh, tell them it's a matter of the utmost importance. It means the very existence of their old school. Miss Brown, I believe you're right. Just look to here. Here's Samuel W. Halsey. He's a multimillionaire in New York. And here's Tom Bird. Remember him? He's one of our greatest fullbacks. The big business man in Chicago. I wonder what became of Lucas. You know, I never did think he'd amount to anything. Oh, he was a nice boy, Dean, but uh, he used to waste too much time with that uh, uh, saxophone. He used to bring it to school with him. You must remember him, Miss Brown. You and Lucius were in the same class, weren't you? Why, yes, I remember Lucius. He was a very nice boy. 
Yes, I remember now. Lucius was so shy and backward. Uh, he was sort of sweet on you, Miss Brown. Well, I... Uh, oh, yes, 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 Dean. Now I remember. Lucius was very sweet on Miss Brown. And, uh, as I recall, it was Benjamin Ware the third who was extremely jealous and was responsible for Lucius packing up and leaving town. Uh, you say that you've never heard from him, Miss Brown? No, Lucius has never written. No one's ever heard from him since. He was such a timid boy. Well, we'll send him an invitation along with the others. I don't expect him to show up. No, we can count on very little from Lucius Brokenshire Jordan. ahead, Mr. Jordan. The conductor says there may be a delay of several hours. I got to open at the Paramount Theater in New York tomorrow. We can't be held up like this. I'm very sorry, Mr. Jordan, but we are held up, and there's not enough that can be done about it. Well, I got to do something about it. I got to send a wire. What kind of jerk town is this anyway? I got to send a wire. Hey, a porter? Yes, sir. Yeah. I am going to give you a chance to get even, you know? So I'm going to flip this coin up for, for a drink. Double or nothing? No, sir. No, sir. You haven't paid me for a drink since you left Chicago. Anything else you want, you have to put it on the line, because I ain't. Well, now, wait a minute. What's the matter? Is something wrong? No, sir. No, sir. Nothing's wrong at all. I'm willing to get anything you gentlemen wish. But I'd also like to make a little profit on a trip. I don't want to wind up on the railroad money. Well, sorry, man. That's, that's you. I mean, that you feel that way. Well, give all, give, give all the boys. A yes, sir. Yes, I'll pay sir. It. Now, what did you gentlemen wish? Are you here? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The same thing all around. Well, boys, I see where I'm going to have to change my method because the port is getting kind of wise to what I'm doing. So I guess I have to ripple these cards up a little bit. So, so I mean, I'm going to show you a little part of three cards. So, you know, 
Pardon me, sir. Can you tell me where I can find a telephone around here? The nearest telephone is at the college, about six blocks down the street. What college is that? Listen, mister, don't you know what town you're in? This is Ware, Ohio. There ain't but one college here, and that's Ware College. Where? No. It can't be. Ware College? <laughs> Well, fellas, I got the cards here. Yeah, I mean, it cost a couple of inches, lead, and one packet. See, yeah, I mean, it's three cards mine. Now, watch it now. Now, keep your mind on the cards. I read all of them now. I mean, I mean, I'm not trying to make a fool out of it. Nothing like that. Keep, now, keep your mind on it, man. Now, keep your mind. Now, take me the black stuff. Oh, naturally, naturally, you would know it was that. I think it's because I'm slaughtered. But you... Oh, the slaughter. Huh? Ah, you know, oh, you're all sorts of you back again, yes, huh? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Well, I'm going to give you a chance to get your one last chance. <laughs> Come on now. Now, I, now I'm going to show it to you. Now, you know, any fool would know. Now, look, I turned that one over. That was fool. Well, when they put in the watch the car, the watch the car. Now, naturally, you know where the black card is, yes, because I'm a shook. Yes, sir. Uh, that, that's it, ain't it? Yes, sir. Now, watch him, now, watch him, now, watch the cars all the way through. Now, watch him, now, you know I'm going to put that card right back in the same place that you always have. Now, fix the car. Yes, sir. Wait, wait a minute. Are you sure? Certainly, I'm sure. Pick it up. Yes, sir. Got off for it. Pay off. Pay off. Come on. Come on. That's it. Come on. That's it. Got it. Get it on the line. Now, I wonder who that can be this time of night. Come in. Why, Dean Hargrave. Lucius. Why, bless my soul. And Professor Drury. Well, well, you do look marvelous, my boy. And you, you look prosperous, too, uh, Lucius. How is that we haven't heard from you in all these years? Well, uh... Uh, yes, Lucius. Why haven't you communicated with us? Of course, we weren't expecting you until tomorrow. What? Expecting me tomorrow? Well, uh, that's all right. Don't worry about being early, my boy. We can put you up. You can stay in your old bed in the dormitory. Uh, we are so proud that you are the first to arrive. But I have an important phone call to make, and I just came in to ask you if I could use your phone. Why, certainly, Lucius. Why didn't you say so before? You may use the phone. Uh, there it is, right over there. Thank you, Dean. Long distance? I'd like to reach Mr. Burl Adams at the Astorbilt Hotel, New York. Collect. Oh, hello? Yes, yes. Oh, what do you know, Burl? Oh, you heard about it, huh? Yes, we will be delayed about 24 hours. Oh, the opening's been set back a week? Oh, that's fine. That's fine. What? No, I'm not crazy. Yes? Yes, if you want to reach me, you can reach me at this number. Ware 819M. Oh, you never heard of Ware College? What? Burr, your education has been sadly neglected. Okay. Okay. If there's any changes, you can reach me at this number. So long. I'm sorry, I couldn't help reading that letter from Benjamin Ware III, shutting off the college fund. I didn't know. Oh, yes, Lucas. Unfortunately, it is true. We were going to inform you all about the situation tomorrow when the others arrive. The others? Yes, sir. We invited some of our old grads who we thought might be interested in helping us to save the school to attend a meeting here tomorrow. 
They all received the same invitation that we mailed you. Of course, uh, we were not so sure of your address since we hadn't heard from you in so long. Didn't you receive the letter? Well, uh, our... Uh... You see, Lucius, the only address we had was care of general delivery, Chicago, Illinois. So you sent the letter to Lucius Brokenshire Jordan, care of general delivery, Chicago, Illinois. Yes, and we are so glad that you received it. And now it's getting late, and I know you are tired after your long trip. Long trip? Holy matter. I just thought, would you mind being if I brought some of my boyfriends up from the station? Why, certainly, Lucius. We'll be glad to have your boyfriends. We can put them up. We have plenty of room, as you can guess. Bring them along. Thanks, Dean. Hold the phone. You know, Dean, I think Lucius has changed a great deal. Good morning, heartache, you old gloomy sight. Good morning, heartache, thought we said goodbye last night. I turned and paused until it seemed you had gone. But here you are with the dawn. Wish I'd forget you, but you're here to stay. It seems I met you when my love went away. Now every day I start by saying to you, Good morning, heartache, what's new? Stop haunting me now. Can't shake you, no how. I've got those Monday blues, straight through Sunday blues. Good morning, heartache, here we go again. Good morning, heartache, you're the one who knew me when. Might as well get used to you hanging around. Good morning, heartache, sit down. I know you'll break my heart again, but come right in, heartache, sit down. Hey, fella, this is the truest, the truest same thing that little Louis ever did. did. I mean, I don't mind sleeping here, yes, it's true, but these old jacks are out. Yeah, and what's his idea of getting us up this early? He wants me to go back to school. You could really stand, stand in school, man. You know that? Ah. Uh, man, man, all you figure is girl. That's all right. And so, hey, wait a minute, son. One time, I mean, what, what's holding Lord? Lord, Lord, Lord. Uh, I want you all to meet uh, one of our old grads. I am very proud to present Lucius Brokenside George. If he did it, well, anybody'd know that's Louis Jordan. My brother's got all his records home. Gee, I'd better telephone home and tell my brother Louis is here. Oh, yes, Donald. You may leave the room. Professor Drury, the dean would like to see you in the study right away. I'll be right there, Miss Brown. Oh, uh, by the way, you remember Lucius, former classmate of yours, I believe. Why, yes, of course. Oh, hello. Oh. Nice seeing you again, Lucius. Uh, Miss Brown's our athletic instructress, Lucius. Still the same sweet amateur. 
pardon me. I, I'm a joint professor in the dean's study. I do hope I'll see you a little later. Yes, I have a very important matter I'd like to discuss with you. Just as soon as you get through with the dean, meet me right back here. All right, I'll meet you right here. Uh, by the way, you'd better take over the class for the professor till he returns. Oh, oh, oh yes. Uh, uh, what is the lesson for the day, kids? Ah, the heck with the lesson. How about playing us a number, Mr. Jordan? Okay, just a minute. Listen, Joe, I say it's Louis Jordan, and what's more, he's got his band with him. You better round up the gang and hurry. Hello? Joe? Yeah. I'm telling you, it's Louis Jordan and Percy with his band. They're at the college. Okay, get the bunch and we'll meet you there. I see by the professor's chart that this is your geography theory. So, kids, I would like to take you with me on my recent trip way out west in the land of the Buffalo Nickel. I recently took a trip through the wild and woolly west. And in spite of all the morning, I found myself one morning in the terrible town of Skeleton Rest. In the land of the Buffalo Nickel. A two-gun cowboy fella was sipping sarsaparilla through a straw. And kids, that's just what I saw. It was in the land of the Buffalo Nickel. The wildest looking Mabel was wearing mink and sable. Bless the soil, where pop struck oil. What kind of west is this, says I to me. 3,000 miles from Brooklyn, and this I gotta see In the land of the Buffalo Nickel A guy what looks like trouble comes running on the double Shout the stop, hold it Let's all have a whipped cream sundae with the cherry on the top In the land of the Buffalo Nickel those outlaws in the canyon greet ladies' home companions as they ride. And kids, that's just what I find in the land of the Buffalo Nickel. A rough and tumble hombre while fighting for his laundry pulls a gun, cause it ain't done. What kind of west is this, says I to me? I'm looking for excitement, and this I gotta see in the land of the Buffalo Nickel. I saw a tea room roundup, six malted, and I wound up on a train. It's back to where I come from, cause the sights are just the same. And I ain't got a Buffalo Nickel to my name. Dean would like to see you in his study. Okay, Miss Brown. Do you think that you are going to get thrown out of here again? Come in. Lucius, it seems that bad luck is still with us. Look at all these telegrams to our request. Nothing but regrets and excuses. Our plan has failed after all. We'll have to close the scheme. Dean Hargraves, when I was a student at Ware, I used to play my saxophone and sing to myself when things looked hopeless. You know, Dean... Here's a funny little song I made up one night when I was feeling very low. And it went something like this. Persistency is such a very good habit. You'll find it in explorers like Mr. Cabot, who sailed across the ocean away from love and devotion, but they held true to their course and never had the slightest remorse. Hold on, 
Like nails into a floor, hold on. Like hinges to a door, if you don't know what I'm singing for. Hold on, hold on, be persistent, Dean. Hold on, hold on. Like cabbage to a lip, hold on. Like baby to a gift, if you still don't get the drift. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Many people have ambition, but don't know how to pull the wire. Watch a bulldog, he's a smart dog. When he gets something he desires, hold on. Like a foot to its toe, hold on. Like baby to her bone. If lady luck hits you with dough, hold on, hold on, hold on. But don't know how to pull the wire Just watch a bulldog He's a smart dog When he gets something he desires Hold on Like crooners to a mic Hold on To anything you like If someone says to hit the pipe Hold on, hold on, hold on Now don't give up When things look bad Just hold on for a little while Well, well, Lucius, you have improved considerably on your saxophone. Dean Hargreaves, I wish to speak with you privately. Mr. Brown, gentlemen, excuse me. Now, Dean Hargreaves, I would like to know by what authority you had the audacity writing Congressman Irvington and others appealing for funds. As you well know, I am the sole executor of the College of State. Your acting without my knowledge or consent constitutes a violation of your office. Consequently, I must ask you to submit your resignation immediately. <laughs> the meaning of this. While I'm pleased to see such a large attendance, I must also remind you that this is supposed to be the period for history. And what you have been just doing is far from historical. Uh, uh, we will proceed with the lesson in history. And the class will be conducted uh, by a former student of this college, Mr. Lucius Brokenshire George. Your mother used to fix your lunch, and you'd come to school, and all you'd get was reading and writing and arithmetic. But the world has progressed now, and now the only way you got to have a beat. Now, children, let Brother George tell you how to be reached with everyone you meet. Just get in the groove with that boogie-woogie move, because today you got to have a beat. 
people today is full of rhythm. It's in their head or even in their feet. So you better wake up and get with them. Because today you gotta have a beat. The world is full of competition. And you've got to be strong to compete. If you don't know what it's about, you'll soon find out that you really got to have a beat. The truest thing ever been said is that history always repeats. Because there was a time when jazz was in line, but today you got to have the beat. When Columbus discovered America, he was in line for the king's crown and seat. But now he would be just another sailor, because today you got to have the beat. All revere one worldly fame for his daring and brilliant feat. There's no more need for those kind of deeds, because today you got to have the beat. Romeo won the heart of Juliet with music that was soft and sweet. But that couldn't happen to these present Juliet, because today you got to have the beat. All of you could be successful if you get together and walk on the right street. The only receipt for success or progress today, you got to have the beat. Old King Cole was a merry old soul. In his day, he was really all weak. But things have changed, and he'd look very strange, because today, you got to have the beat. You could finish Howard, Yale, and Tuskegee, and your education still wouldn't be complete. Because unless you got that swing, you got to have that beat. Chopin wrote some beautiful music, and to hear it played is really a treat. It's still okay, but a bit past day, because today, you got to have the beat. Now, kids, that's your history lesson for today, so now let's go on out and play. This is our mascot, Mr. Jordan. Ever since our mascot can't see no more, we don't have any luck in our game. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it, Sonny. When I was going to school here at where, I used to believe in rabbit feet, lucky charm. But all that old stuff is just a lot of superstition. Now, you take this old mule. He's just as lucky today as he was when I was going to school here. Hey, fellas, get your instruments and let's tell little Joe about the mule. Don't stress, start worrying about the mule going blind. Just sit tight and hold that line. Don't worry about the cow being pulled. Just drink that milk and ask for more. Don't you worry about that mule. Cause he ain't going blind. Don't you worry about that mule. Baby, you just hold that line. Don't you worry about that mule. Cause you know he ain't no fool. Don't you worry about that mule. Baby, just keep cool. Some flying high and some flying low. Somebody's got to go. You know that I know that he know that you know. You better listen to me. You take it slow. Don't you worry about that mule. Cause he ain't going blind. Don't you worry about that mule. Baby, you just hold that line. And take it slow, don't you worry about that mule, cause he ain't going blind. The mule's been the fool, he ain't no fool, so sit on your stool and don't worry about the mule. Gee, I bet if the fellas knew that old mule was as lucky now as when you went to school, they'd win that game, say. I'm going to tell him. Louis Jordan, now I know why you've become such a famous headliner in show business. You just like to make people happy, even kids like Joe there. Oh, so now you know. I, I sort of hope you would. Of course, I've known right along. I hope you don't consider me as old-fashioned as the dean and Professor Drury. Well, Annabelle, darling, when I left Well, how I was an unsophisticated kid myself. I didn't know what it was all about. 
And you know, I still can't account for the act of providence that brought me back here. But there's one thing I'm not going to miss this time. Mm. Well, darling, it took you a long time to do that. And I'm not going to leave without you this time. Oh, but I can't leave to see Hargraves and Professor Drury just when they need me most. Did you know that Benjamin Ware the third is forced to be to resign and closing the school? Oh, no, that's impossible. Something is screw it. Aaron, take my heart. Oh, uh, that couldn't happen. I happen to know that Benjamin Ware the first left enough money in the bank to take care of the school for 100 years. But, Louis, Benjamin Ware the third is purposely juggling the, the books of the Ware Fund in order to make it appear that there's a shortage. He knows how much I love this school, and he thinks he can force me into marrying him in order to save the college. Oh, so that's it. We'll take care of Benjamin Ware the third. But in the meantime, let's do some fundraising on our own. Why not stay in entertainment and dance right here in the gym Saturday night? You know, I think we could pack them in even in Ware, Ohio. Oh, darling, how I love you more than ever. Now, ain't that sweet? Mm-hmm. Now, just hold the phone. I'll be right back. Listen, Burl, get that government income tax friend of mine, Joe Drake. Get him down here on the double. You know, the one that makes out my income tax. I've got a very important job for him. Okay. What's that? Huh? Yeah. Well, we'll leave here for New York Saturday night, right after the dance. See you. Hargreaves, when you get through jitterbugging with Mr. Lloyd Jordan, I'll be here waiting for you to hand over the keys of the school to me. Or perhaps you'd rather do it now and save yourself the trouble of coming back. Uh, Dean Hargreaves, Professor, would you mind leaving me alone with Mr. Benjamin Ware III? There's something I'd like to tell him privately. Oh, it's all right. Run along and tell Louis I'll be right over to the desk. Now you're being sensible, Annabelle. And if you were to just alter your attitude a little toward me, I, I might arrange to keep the school guard on my mind. Mr. Audience. Benjamin, where the third? I think you're the lowest man I've ever met. I despise you. Benjamin Ware, up to your old trick. With your money and power, you ran me out of town years ago. Now you're trying to wreck the lives of other people that won't bend to your will. I've had just about enough of your meddling, Mr. Louis Jordan. You may be a big shot with the hep cats in New York, but I run this town, and what I say goes here. I see I'll have to call the police the second time and have you thrown out of town again. Just a minute. Just a minute. Look at that, Mr. Benjamin Ware III, before you call the police. That's the bank examiner's report of the Ware College Fund in your local bank. And it says there that you've issued 
false statement. There's enough money to run the college for another hundred years. Your grandfather seen to that. And you can't touch a penny of it. I think I'll call the police now. Oh, no. I have a better idea. Darling, you run over and tell the professor to keep the, the dance going. I have a private matter I'd like to take up with Benjamin Ware the third. Go right ahead, darling. It won't take long. Dean Hargrave, Professor Drury, Miss Brown, ladies and gentlemen and kids, I think Benjamin Wells III has a special announcement to make. Come on. Come on! Tell us! Because of recent developments, we find that it will not be necessary to close Ware College. Yeah. Is that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Now, go over there and sit down. Sit down. And now, kids, I want you all to be seated. We're going to have a little entertainment. We're going to play a number I think you're going to like. Long Leg Lizzie. A little dizzy. She's a little dizzy. Long leg Lizzie is the dizziest gal in town, 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 town. Now here's a story about a gal named Lizzie. She's in the groove, but she's a little dizzy. She climbed up on a shed and fell right down on her head. Long leg Lizzie. Long leg Lizzie. She's a little dizzy. Long leg Lizzie is the dizziest gal in town, 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 town. Lizzie's mother had a premonition. She yeah. said her child was in a strange condition. Yeah. Oh, what an awful fate. Lizzie's tall as the Empire State. Long leg Lizzie. Long leg Lizzie. She's a little dizzy. She's a little dizzy. Long leg Lizzie is the dizziest gal in town, town. to have a ball, but that gal ain't nowhere at all. You know, she's so doggone tall, sleeps in the kitchen with her feet in the hall. Long leg Lizzie, Long leg Lizzie. she's a little dizzy. She's a little dizzy. Long leg Lizzie is the dizziest gal in town, 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 town. fell in love with a guy named Shorty. He was fat and over 40. He said, Lizzie, you're too tall to please. She said, darling, I'll walk around on my knees. Long leg Lizzie. Long leg Lizzie. She's a little dizzy. She's a little dizzy. Long leg Lizzie is the dizziest gal in town, 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 town. Sat down on the ground. Yeah. Up in the air, she heard the strangest sound. Yeah. Sad but true when Lizzie rose. An airplane bumped her on the nose. Long leg Lizzie. Long leg Lizzie. She's a little dizzy. She's a little dizzy. Dizzy Lizzie. Dizzy Lizzie. Lizzie's dizzy. Lizzie's dizzy. Dizzy Lizzie. Dizzy Lizzie. Dizzy Lizzie. Dizzy Lizzie. Dizzy Lizzie. Dizzy Lizzie. Long leg. 
Big Liz is the dizziest gal in town. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. Now, here's a little tune that I'd like to play for you. It has a little story to it. We was drive through Washington, and I stopped in front of a cafe and went in to get a hamburger, and when I come out, this is what happened. Kids, thank you. Thank you so very much. Now, we'd like to dedicate a tune to Mr. Benjamin Ware the third, and all the fellows like him. It's called Beware. <laughs> now, fellas, you see these girls with these fine diamonds and fox furs and fine clothes? Well, Jack, they're looking for a husband. And you're looking at a man who knows. Get him hooked. They ain't fooling. If you fool around with them, you're going to get yourself a school. If she saves your dough and won't go to a show, be beware, well, brother. Brother, beware. Be well. If she's easy to kiss and never resist, be well. Be careful, I'm telling you. And when you go for a walk, if she just listens while you talk, out, she's fixing to hook you, man. She's fixing to hook you. If nobody's looking and she says, taste her cooking, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. If you go to a show and she wants to sit in the back row, bring her down front. Bring her right down front. 
she goes for a snack and wants a booth in the back, watch her. Be careful. And listen, if she's used to caviar and fine syrup, and when she goes out with you, she wants a hot dog and a malted milk. She's been used to going to Carnegie Hall. And when you take out nightclub and she wants to hear one meatball, if she grabs your hand and says, darling, you're such a nice man. Be, be careful. I'm careful. Are you listening to me? No, no, no. Don't look at her. Look at me. Look at me. I'm trying to save you, brother. I'm trying to save you. Look around this way. Look at here. Look at here. Listen, listen. If her sister calls you brother, you better get further. I'm telling you. You better hit him. I'm telling you. If she's kind of wild and she said, darling, please give me a try. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't be weak. If she looks in your face and just melts in the place, let her know. Forget it. And if her mother calls you sonny and asks about your money, that ain't funny. I'm telling you. Are you paying attention to me? Are you listening to me? Oh, look at her. Kicking him on the leg, man. Tell him to not listen. Let that man alone, child. Let that man alone. Listen, listen, listen to this. Listen. If she calls you on the phone and she says, darling, are you all alone? Tell her no, you've got three women with you. That's right, that's right. That's right, I'm good. I'm trying to, I'm trying to tell you to be a man. Don't be a man. No women. Be a man. Should I tell him about this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is very important. No, I don't believe I tell him. No, no look at her, kicking him on the leg, telling me, better not look. Should I tell him anyhow? I won't tell him anyway. Listen, Jack. Jack, if you turn out the light and she don't fight, that's it. It's too late. If you get home about two and you don't know what to do and you pull back the curtain and the whole family's looking at you, get your business straight and set the date and don't be late. Game. So, brother, beware! <laughs> Got a big tri-motor plane, but I can fly. Got everything that's modern and new, but got an old-fashioned passion for you. Got a steam yacht anchored right at my back door. Got a great big swimming pool right in my floor. Got lots of things that granddad never knew, but got an old Fashion for you. Got a thousand modern gadgets that I can stop a star, but I can't control the movement of a gadget called my heart. Got the latest thing that science can devise, but the greatest thing of all I realize is the oldest thing the world ever knew. That's my old fashioned passion. I got an old-fashioned passion for you. 